two mugs in a workshop. Previously on Two Mugs in a Workshop. Hi everyone, Ian and Mark, Two Mugs in a Workshop. We've had a customer drop the BMW off this morning for a rocker cover replacement. And when Mark fired the car up, terrible clattering sound, sounded like the timing chain. So I ran across to him and said, be careful with that engine. We've just got the rocker cover off and this is what Mark's found. Taking the rocker cover off, um, there was a rattle. We've now uh, inspected the back chain and the upper guide rail that is bolted to the top of the cylinder head. As you can see, it's actually gone. It's disintegrated and dropped down. And also when you lift the chain off here, these teeth here, they're just rounded. There's, there's no actual sprocket, They're, it's virtually flat there is. So we've advised the customer to have a new timing chain and obviously we'll all be genuine BMW fitted. Thank you. Oh, hang on a minute. Next week, it took us over two weeks to get this episode out and for that we can only apologise. The workshop's been mad, mad, mad busy over the last couple of weeks. And there's only two mugs in our workshop, so that means, well, unfortunately, we have to get the work done. We're brand new to YouTubing as well, so sometimes when we film this stuff, quite honestly, we don't really know it's going to turn out. And the whole editing process turns into, well, you never know what's going to happen until the very end of it. Let's say that. Let's crack on with this N47 timing chain episode. I think it's turned more into a magazine type article. It's uncut, it's raw, it's exactly what happened in the workshop. At times, I'm unable to get to do the filming when Mark's doing a piece. So, inevitably, we're gonna miss little bits out here and there, and we've never intended this to be a start to finish. This is how you remove an engine, replace the timing chains, and replace the engine type video. None of our stuff is supposed to be instructional, but there's some tips in there and Mark's many years of experience, you're gonna learn something. So thank you, stay tuned. Okay, so uh, Ian's told me it's my turn to do a little bit of uh, a video on two mugs in a workshop. Uh, well, trying. Uh, as Ian explained previously, customer came in for a rocker cover gasket leak. Uh, unfortunately, when we took the rocker cover off, the top chain that goes onto the uh, sprocket on the back of the camshaft here comes down to the high pressure. Uh, this guide rail here is totally disintegrated. There's actually parts of the actual rail that were in the sump. Um, I've got a little bit of debris out, but I'll persist. But some of this is even melted. But all we're going to do now is we're going to take these guide rails off. So the one's disintegrated. We've got one on the top tensioner, one on this uh, internal tensioner, and one just on the high pressure pump down to crank. Uh, just make note, guys, this bolt here on the uh, oil pump is a left-hand thread. So you tighten it up to undo it. What you usually do sometimes, if you can't lock the engine, is put a screwdriver in this dowel and this housing here and just lever against it, but it is a left-hand thread, guys. So please don't use it as a conventional thread because you'll snap the high-pressure spindle and then you're in a world of hurt. So that's the bottom chain off. Not easy to film this, Mark. I bet everyone's feeling seasick. Well, speed it up a bit when it comes to editing. I'll make you look like a professional. <laughs> Talking of which, is it coffee time yet? We'll come back to this later, guys. We've got quite a few bolts to undo here. I've left but... the instruction book for the coffee making to read. Oh yeah, which machine? Number one or number two machine? Number two machine? Okay, good. All right, I'll crack on with it then. Bet they're in Italian as well. All right, there you go. It's just a load of bolts coming out now, people, so there's not really much to see. But we'll come back to it once we start finding more debris, probably, from the timing um, chain guides that have disintegrated. You can see on this rag, these are all of the fragments of the um, timing chain guides. They're made out of plastic. 
These are all recovered from the sump and the oil pickup, which um, picks the oil up from the sump, strains it through a filter and then passes it around the engine. That was blocked too, so Mark's cleaned that out and made sure there's no debris in there. You can see from the wear on this top peg, which is located in the cylinder head here, and this timing chain guide sits through there, but this was totally disintegrated. This was in the bottom of the sump in about 25 pieces. Uh, so what we're gonna do is gonna replace this, just follow that pin down. There's, a, there's sufficient strength in that pin uh, for it not to uh, impede any of the operation of the guide rail. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just drop the new one in, locate it in, with the Torx bolt, just nip it for now. And then we're gonna proceed doing the other guide rail uh, and the other tensioner rail and build all the timing gears up now. And then we'll do another video just to show you uh, all the components in the correct location. There's sump on the N47 engine job after Mark's cleaned it all out. There's quite a lot of debris in the bottom. Right then, so I've just put the high pressure gear on the uh, chain from crank to high pressure. Uh, there's a little dowel there, and what I tend to do is I drop a screwdriver, a long screwdriver, through the injector uh, location and touch the top of the piston, and then I turn the crank, make a reference mark on the, uh, the shank of the screwdriver. As it's going up and down, when it stops, you know you're at TDC. It's only at a prox at the moment, because once I start timing everything up, and put the um, flywheel on, then I can put the pin in, time it up correctly, and then I, everything I know is lined up here, and it's just a case of putting the cams in, uh, the uh, sprocket on the back of the camshaft loosely, so as I rotate, it doesn't rotate the cam, and then, uh, as I say, once all this is timed up, pins in, and the cams are in the correct position. There's two lugs on one of the cams, and there's another lug on the other one, so basically, you line up the cam timing with the top of the cam carrier here. So you'll have one dot and two. So you have it on the horizontal here, smack bang in the middle. So that's your timing reference on the back of the cams and the TDC, as I say, there's a pin in the flywheel there. But we'll show you that in the next video. Uh, what we've done now is uh, replace guide rails, internal tensioner, spray rail, which is an important one to always replace. We've tightened up the, uh, the oil pump uh, bolt here. Remember, this is a left-hand thread, so you uh, undo it to tighten it. Uh, and as you can see on this pulley here, there's like a recess. On the other side, it's dead flat, so it sits flush against the oil pump. But this side, it's got a little bit of a recess where the, uh, the bolt is engaged uh, so that's about it really new tensioner internal spray rail high pressure gear uh, guide rails all four pins been put in on at the top so now what we're going to do is put the uh, the back plate on and then we're going to make another video to show you how i'll put the plate on without damaging uh, the rear crank main we're back on the n47 engine guys and the rear timing cover is sealed with um, like a liquid type sealant. Um, we get it from BMW, it's a lot tight product. Uh, you can see it just about in Mark's hands down there. It's a lot tight product, we get it from BMW. Typically we order two tubes of this to seal up that back case and the sump as well. So um, we'll come back to it once Mark's finished applying all of the sealant. Right, so here's the rear timing case cover that Mark's putting back on. Um, it's just a case after the sealant's on of just tapping it home um, just gently with the soft side of a mallet. You need to be careful though because there's a couple of um, dowels, little locating pins. You can see these on the outside that go off to the bell housing. There's also some on the other side of the plate that locate it. Um, onto the engine block and it's very easy to either pinch those or um, or bend them 
So what you need to do, if I come around the other side of Mark, the surface here, you can see the side of the dowel just sticking out there. So this surface here, between where the plate meets the engine cover, you need to make sure that is perfectly flush all the way around. It's worth taking just a bit of time, otherwise you're gonna end up with a massive oil leak on your hands. Mark, you wanna explain the uh, crank seal? Yep, uh, so what I do is I... The rear. I put the back plate on, in in location approximately i make sure it's underneath the head gasket here hold it in position and then gently apply a little bit of pressure square on and then i get a piece of cardboard with a little bit of grease on it and i run it around the perimeter of the rear main and the crankshaft so as i'm pushing it in i turn it and just rotate it like this and then i pull it out and then the seal should be in the correct position on the crank so it doesn't enfold on itself and allow oil to escape. So it does the job that it's intended to do. It's a little trade tip there from Mark. It's, I think it's the gentlest way you've found of doing it, isn't it, Mark? Yeah, because yeah, I've had a seal folding on me. Yeah, there's all different ways of doing it, but that's definitely the most gentle way. And we've never had any problems since we started doing that. In fact, worth saying actually that of all of these N47 engines that Mark's done, and there's many now because it's a really common problem we're probably getting what one a week in yeah. easy and we turn work away to be honest because we're only a very small workshop uh, there hasn't been a single engine come back we've never had any issues with any of these engines after they've been rebuilt so keep watching uh we'll come back to it as mark gets more up towards the uh top end of the engine um he's going to put the sump back on as well and um we'll keep you posted right the way through so Mark's just applying a bit more of the same sealant as before, the Loctite sealant, around the sump. And uh, if you remember earlier, there was quite a lot of debris found in the sump from the timing chain guides and also in the oil pickup, um, which you can see at the bottom of the engine there, the oil pickup, there was a lot of debris in there as well, which we've cleaned out. So. Um, should all be good once it goes back together again. So it's just a matter of smearing the sealant all the way around the bottom of that sump and then uh, reapplying the bolt. And over this side of the workshop, the other mug has got the sump back on. So Mark's finished with that sealant. Let's try and stop that from swinging around, making us all feel seasick. And the sump is on and good to go. What's next, Mark? We're just gonna uh, engage the uh, engine pin from behind the, uh, the plate that we've put on. We're then gonna rotate the engine. If you look, if you just look here, this slot here is where the engine pin will come out. And theoretically, that should be, we'll rotate it round. There she is here, you push her through. Well, apologies for the shaky camera work, but there you go. me and Mark are getting a bit intimate there. So that's TDC on the pistons. Again, top screwdriver, usually has a, have a reference mark, so when you're turning it, you know it's approximately. So now we know that the pistons are at TDC, cams are out, so we've got no fears of bending any valves when we tighten the uh, cams up. Uh, as I said, we'll have two marks on the cam. One's got two dots, one's got uh, one. So we'll put those in and then we leave this loose so this can turn freely on the oil pressure pump. So we know TDC, we're gonna get the cams in the correct position and then we've got three torques uh, to bolt this. Sorry, Mark, just saying about the cams up at the uh, the top uh, when the compressor line blew off. Um, you can see up at the top, Mark's already got the sprocket kind of sitting with the chain around it in position. And this high pressure uh, gear here, I've left the torques loose on this. So now the engine's at TDC, this is slack. So what we'll do is put the cams in One's got the two, one's got the one. And basically, uh, we'll put the cams in, tighten them down, nip them up, 
put the sprocket on the back of the camshaft and then there's three torques we put them on and say job done uh, and that's about it so timing wise two dots and one dot uh, on this horizontal section of the uh, cylinder head there so the middle dot goes perfectly in line with this and TDC there you've got no risk of uh, damaging any valves guys okay we'll come back to the little dots on the cams it'll be easy to see in action once Mark starts to drop the cams in so we'll come back to that bit later on all right then guys so I've timed the cams up and on this cam which is the exhaust side there's two dots here one there and one there and there's another one there on the inlet cam so basically I've put the inlet cam one in line with here and a dot that disappears under and a, a dot that's just above it so that middle line there is in line with this so that's all timed up now you can tighten the three uh, torques on the camshaft sprocket and uh, after doing the three torques there you can do the high pressure pump bolt torques there and then put the cap on so you've only got to nip that off there's and that's about it guys the only other thing i would say is all these caps here are numbered one two three four five there's little numbers on them and if you look the e is on the inlet side so i would class that as enter and the a is on the exhaust side Hang for on, away let's do the e first so the e is the inlet side so that I, I, I would assume that's enter and the A on this one is on the exhaust side for away. So just remember that. It's a little, mem a. little memory aid, E to enter, A for away. So back in the uh, workshop and Mark's pretty much built this up now. Uh, like we said many times on these videos, we're not here as a tutorial. We're just trying to give you an honest look at what goes on here, eh Mark? Um, so we saw last time that the cams were in and there everything was timed up the rest of it is fairly straightforward you put the rockers back on reconnected all of the fuel pipes uh, put the fuel rail back together uh, and just start to attach all the ancillaries mark anything to add no, that's about it really just make yeah. a general observation of any pipes and uh, electrical plugs that you've removed uh, let's say this has got the, uh, the turbo on here, so uh, yeah. We didn't get the luxury of working out if there's anything wrong with this engine when it came in because the timing chain went pretty much straight away. So, uh, have you spotted anything else on the way around? No, seems all okay. Hunky dory now, so uh, hopefully we'll be putting it in in the next half hour, come in tomorrow morning for a couple of hours, hook everything up, and uh, hopefully uh, we'll be able to start it, but there's a couple of components that we're just gonna change as a precautionary measure. Yeah, and obviously things like the turbo, um, we can't really be 100% sure on that because we've not been able to test anything before it ran. There was a little bit of oil around it, but worst case, that's something that can be done after the event. And to be fair, this customer's in for a big enough bill already. Thanks for watching.